Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're here in the ATR, heading into Piarco. I'm going to tell you shortly what I figured out about crashes with the frame generation. I'm also going to give you a couple tips with the ATR. Uh, first one being right now, the descent. One of the things that people are having trouble with is getting getting uh, VNAV and have engaged. So once you get close up on this top of descent, what you want to do, you've also got, you've already got your lower altitude uh, set there. And what you want to do before you get to that TOD circle, hit vertical speed mode and start into about a eh, thousand foot descent. Okay. Now we've done that, and what we're waiting for that magenta box right there. As soon as you see that magenta box, you can click VNAV and it'll go into VNAV path mode. And once it goes into VNAV path mode, what it's going to do also is tell you what the next altitude you're supposed to have selected. I had 3000. It wants me at 4100, which is the transition altitude going into Biarco. So we'll do that. Uh, set that up to 4100 feet and let's go through how to set up an ILS approach in the uh, in the ATR but before we do that I'll tell you what was crashing my uh, frame generation setup here in Microsoft Flight Simulator so this is the third time I believe that I've tried this flight uh, and the first time it's actually worked and what was happening was my MSI yeah I see we're getting that people have been talking about my MSI afterburner is what was crashing this um, and, he, and he, he says right in the notes for this frame gen mod that if you have afterburner open while you're changing settings in the sim it can crash it i didn't have it open while i was changing settings it just crashed it anyway um so i've not used that at all on this flight and it's been perfectly fine so let's go into the airport here get our weather 1309 or 1012. Okay. Let's see here. Come over here. We'll do, do our performance calcs. Uh, I actually think it's 5500. It's a transition level on the way down, and it is 5500. So we set that. We set 1012 for the altimeter. And the winds are already in, which is great. So, now what we need to do uh, is set the set up the ILS. So first of all, uh, how far are we out from the gear? We are 115 out from the gear, so we got to do this relatively quickly. Center your heading bug. Go into heading mode. Let's check our chart. What is our ILS frequency here? I don't know why this is in night mode, but it is 109.7. Alright. Come down here to the nav. What is that? Uh, 109.7. Da -da. And then we're going to. No, that's ADFs. Why? why did it go to ADFs? One zero nine seven. Alright, over and up and over one zero nine seven. Enter, enter. Alright, both of those are now in. We can go back to nav mode. And actually, I didn't need to do that. Now that I think about it. Uh, all right, descent checklist. Uh, 
FWS recall. Good there. Landing elevation set automatically. FMS nav performance is good to go. Ooh, and we are in pitch hold mode because we have vastly exceeded 245 knots. I didn't check. You've got to keep an eye on your speed in the descent because, of course, as you get lower in this airplane, you're going to your speed, your indicated airspeed is going to increase. Uh, remember, an airspeed indicator. When did I select that? Airspeed indicator is essentially a molecule collector. So as you get lower and the air gets thicker, uh, your indicated airspeed is going to go up by default. And so you got to really keep an eye and make sure it doesn't go over that 100 and, uh, 245 knots. Otherwise, it is going to uh, go into pitch hold mode. It's at 270 here for our... Minimum is 265 is the minimum. Of course, we can't set 265. All right, we'll do the arrival briefing here shortly. All right, now is when we want to center the heading bug, go into heading mode. Now we want to go to ILS 1. That is set. We need to set the course. The course is 105. Uh, and there you see your course right there, 006, right? So you want to set 105. And it's again in VNAV, uh, pitch hold mode, which is irritating. There's 105 on that side. Now we want to go over here, get rid of that. Uh, I don't know why it came out of select LNAV. Okay. Weird. Alright. Let me come back in with some power here so we can maintain the 170 knots. <laughs> 10,000 feet, landing lights, safety belts. I went into pitch hold mode because I was in heading mode. All right, that's all good. So let's go back to, got a minute to do this. Go back to heading mode, ILS 2, over here. We need to set that 105 on this side as well. Is it not on ILS 2 mode? Why is it not? Oh, ILS 2 shows on this side. All right. 105. 105. Okay. There we are. I didn't know that. So now we can go back to nav mode, back to VNAV mode. Now we are ready to rumble. I'll come back down here real quick. Uh, I don't know why it's on the nav page in the ATR, but you want to set your uh, TCAS to below, back here to come. All right. Good up top. Piaco traffic, Caribbean 401 turning a 15 mile final runway 10. Piaco. Uh, we're way too fast. So, let's bring out those power levers. Seat belts, landing lights are on. Altimeters at 5,500 feet. Cap and altitude. Looking good. Before landing checklist, advise the cabin crew, landing gear flaps, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so now 
what we want to do is go into approach mode. We have to set it to ILS 1 and 2. And then we go approach mode, localizer. I'll select glide slopes. Glide slope is way below us. So, glide slope is way below us. So, it wants to be under 150 knots. I don't know why it goes into pitch hold mode all the time here. I'm going to go gear down. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm just I'm just kicking the autopilot off. And we're gonna descend here in a right hurry. Because as you can see we are mighty high here. So what are we out about? Uh, yeah, we're about 11 miles, so we should be pretty good. Piarco traffic here being 401, 10 mile final, one way, one zero. Piarco. That's what I like about this airplane. One of the things I like about this airplane a lot is that it's very, very easy. Uh, to slow down, it's very, very easy to get that. If you were this high in a 737, you're, you're going around. I mean, there's just no saving it at this point. Um, let's see here. Local altimeter 1012. Oh, wrong way. There we are. So we're just going to keep going down. Until we capture the glide slope. And any right there is a five mile final, or a six mile final rather. So. Right now my passengers are getting a little nervous. So we've got the frame gen running. Um, like I said, this is now my third attempt at this particular flight and at least the third attempt and the first two uh, were the first two crashes to desktop I've had in ages I mean ages uh, power to take off all right now go full flaps now we're definitely gonna need some power here. Still C4 white. So just coming up on let's see. That says about four and a half miles. We're still high. Should be probably at about 1200 feet right now ish, four miles out. So but we're catching up. So, what I'm going to do after this flight, so what, what I did was, yeah, you can see that uh, the glide slope now coming in. Yep, I know. Um, And the speed's gonna come right off as soon as we start to, as soon as we start to uh, reduce our descent rate. So we gotta be ready with some throttle to make sure. Uh, Piarco traffic here being 401, short final runway 10 Piarco. Um, so I updated my drive, or actually I unupdated my driver. Yeah, see so, you know, the speed's coming right back. Um, I rolled back my driver. To the, to the one from December 4th. There we go. Two white, two red, like in that. So now we bring up the nose, bring in some power. Feel like 
crosswind here. Approaching minimum. Yeah, it's all right. And then I lowered my settings minimum. yesterday. Two hundred. Continuing. All right, the sun rate and airspeed are both good. Uh, okay. A little bit of power out. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, doesn't get too much better than that. And we're on center line. Let's go reversers. Keep that rudder in a little bit. Oh, it doesn't get too much better than that. It really doesn't. Um, so what I did was, as I was having the crashes yesterday, I kind of thought that maybe uh, the reason was I had my, I had, you know, everything completely jacked. I mean, TLOD 400, etc., etc. So I was like, okay, maybe I need to tone that down a little. So I did. And I still got the crash, but when I rolled back the driver today, um, because that was a, a suggestion I saw, and I think it's the 0.31 driver, I'll put it in the description, but it's the one from December 4th, it's, it's the hotfix driver from December 4th. That was one of the suggestions I read, and then I noticed the thing about MSI Afterburner. Uh, and so I, I, I had been flying the entire flight with afterburner on just to see what my, you know, that's my my FPS over over uh, display over here. Um, Piarco traffic Caribbean four zero one clear uh, runway one zero Piarco. And so when I uh, so I disabled that, just didn't use it at all and no crash. So now what I'm going to do is do another flight and completely jack up the settings. Just totally jack them all the way up. And uh, and we'll see what we get. So that was a success. Um, so anybody who's using an external frame rate counter fps counter like msi afterburner if you're having trouble uh with crashes just don't use it just disenable it and when you do that if you if you go into developer mode and you look at the fps counter in developer mode it's not going to give you the pumped up frame gen frame rates it's going to give you you know the real frame rates and a lot of people have been saying well that just proves that that this uh frame gen thing isn't working that's not true frame frame generation does not increase your actual frame rates it just increases what you see they're 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 fake frames you know simple as that but that doesn't mean that you're not getting a visual difference um, and if that sounds confusing, I can understand. Um, so let's do our parking here and I'm trying to think of what the other thing I was going to mention to you guys was the other thing I was going to mention was Oh yeah, um, there have been some people who have been saying it worked once, like the frame gen thing worked, and then I re you know went to fly again another day or later in the day or whatever, and the frame gen didn't work. Here's the deal: I, I had the same thing happen to me this morning, and so all I did was I just reinstalled, and I think it might have to do with updating drivers. I could be wrong, but what I did was. Um, so I loaded into the sim and the option for frame generation wasn't there. And so what I did was 
I went into, or I, I closed out of the sim, ran the reg edit thing again, the right click merge deal. Um, deleted the two files that you put in the folder. Then put them back in the folder. <laughs> Uh, and then started the sim again, and it worked just fine. So that's uh, that's the story. That's it from here. Uh, so my next flight is going to be my next flight is going to be full on uh, Holy Grail settings with uh, frame gen completely maxed out. 400 TLOD, etc., etc., and we'll see how that goes. And a couple, you know, just to give you an idea, some some future ideas I have going on for the for doing videos. I want to. Somebody asked me to do some uh, to do a tutorial on the ATR, um, and I can walk you through that and kind of talk to you about the faults that the ATR has and how to work around them because you can work around it perfectly fine. Uh, pretty much as long as you're as as long as you're VFR. If you're IFR, it's a little trickier uh, in terms of approaches because there are some bugs that keep you from being able to fly approaches accurately. But uh, definitely looking at one or two more tech things that I have in mind, and some ATR videos, and then just some general um, flying instructional stuff. And also, I have some. Uh, thoughts on the upcoming World Update 16 and uh, the Caribbean, of course, being the focus of World Update 16. So we'll talk about that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on, a whole bunch of stuff I've got in mind. I hope you guys are doing well, and we'll talk soon.